catches it in a cannon, bursts. Or monks say, my hut is well thatched. The windows and doors are tightly closed, so rain God, if you want to go ahead and rain, just go ahead. Of course, the, the hut there is symbolic for the state of the mind, impervious to outside influences. It simply is what it is, and it has its own protection. So tonight we might, tonight we might say, wind God, go ahead and blow as much as you want. Listen to the weather report just now, and they're forecasting gusts up to 60 miles per hour. So when you go back to your hut, make sure your hut is all well fastened. And then look at your mind. Let's see if you can keep your mind well fastened from outside. The influences from the winds from whatever direction they come. There's another passage where they compare the mind of an awakened person to a stone column, sixteen spans tall, eight spans buried in the ground, the other eight sticking up out of the ground. So that no matter what direction the wind comes from, no matter how hard it blows, that column doesn't quiver or shiver or shake. Because the eight directions here stand for the eight ways of the world. Status, loss of status, gain, loss of gain, praise and criticism, pleasure and pain. And look at your mind to see how resistant it is to the influence of those things, or whether it gets blown around too. For most of us, our minds are like kites, the slightest gust of wind, and there goes the kite flying off into the wind. Hardly anything is buried or anything is rooted in there at all. Sometimes it doesn't take a strong wind, just the, the breath out of somebody's mouth, which goes, what, five miles per hour? Who knows how fast? It blows your mind all over the place. A word of praise and your mind gets all blown up. A word of criticism and your mind gets blown around. So you have to learn what to do to make your mind less resistant to the wind, or offer less resistance to the wind, allow the wind to go around it, and find a way to root the mind first here in the body, and then more deeply in itself. So you have something to hold on to instead of grabbing on to whatever comes flying past. This is why we meditate, to give the mind that kind of grounding. And this is why we develop discernment, so we offer less resistance to the wind. Because all the things you hold on to is you or yours, either physical things or the concepts you have about yourself. They offer resistance to the wind, set up huge sails, so that you can get very easily blown around by change. When the mind is concentrated, you can start looking at those things you hold on to to see exactly what there is really worth holding on to, because it takes effort to hold on. It's second nature, it comes easily to us, but it takes a lot of effort to hold on, especially when things change. You find yourself holding on to something that changes and you try to force it not to change. You keep at it until you finally give up, and then you grab onto something else in its place. There's a lot of effort, a lot of energy expended. What do you get for it? The pleasures you've gotten from attachment in the past, where are they now? Usually what remains is the karma that comes from that attachment, the things you did in order to hold on, some of which were not very skillful at all. They reflect on the past, then look at the present. Okay, what are you doing right now that's going to be of real worth for the future? What ways are you holding on that are going to cause you trouble in the future? Is it really worth it to hold on? Especially when the wind is blowing, 
from all eight directions. And you have to struggle to keep that little edifice you have standing in the midst of the wind. In terms of that simile at the beginning of the talk, the well-roofed hut, ours is this huge hut designed to just blow over as easily as possible. And we keep fabricating things. We keep trying to repair the hut and fix it up. And all we do is make it bigger and more resistant to the wind. So, of course, when the wind comes, it blows over. Try to make your hut no bigger than necessary and make sure what hut you do have is well thatched. Make sure your concentration is solid. Make sure your inside is sharp. Keep the mind well protected. Because the world doesn't have just wind, you know, it has rain, it has all kinds of things to make you suffer if you open yourself up to them. And yes, we're often told that we should, part of the practice is to be open to things, but I still haven't found that word in the Pali Canon. The only openness the Buddha advises is when you're open about your past or present failings, when you admit them openly, rather than trying to hide them and keep them festering. That's the only kind of openness I hear the Buddha talking about. Because the Buddha taught heedfulness. And if you open yourself out unnecessarily, that's just plain stupid from the point of view of someone who's heedful and vigilant. Because there are dangers out there. The wind does blow at 60 miles per hour sometimes. So there is that side of the teaching where you also have to be closed. You have to be protective. Offer shelter for yourself. We talk about concentration as a home for the mind. It's not the ultimate home. It's not that ultimate hut that's totally well thatched that can withstand any storm. But at least it can stand, withstand a lot of things that the normal mind can't withstand. To focus on getting your mind settled and solid and rooted and strong. The work that goes into that is work that's well worth the effort. If we don't do that, what's left for us? Well, we have to embrace change, which basically means that you've got to just sort of give up. And Buddha said, use the process of change to improve the mind, to develop good qualities in the mind. So it can take you to the goal, the path. Okay, that's when you're totally free from change. And those openings don't come along all the time. You've got a good opportunity right now, there are very few responsibilities, a lot of time to practice. Focus on the finding those openings in the mind. So take advantage of this opportunity while you've got it. <laughs>